What a mess. There's a lot of horsepower somewhere underneath there. Hello everybody, thanks for tuning in. Before this video starts, I wanted to remind you to check out vbeltandsun.com to purchase your hats and t-shirts and other accessories with full inventory restock. So check it out. Enjoy the video of me possibly humiliating myself driving a Ford. Enjoy. Well, hello everybody. We're doing something today that is pretty much against my religion. We're going to test drive something that I, I've never even driven one, but I've honestly heard great things about it. And it's weird to say that, to even consider it. But Andy and I had to do a delivery at the sawmill right over there. So we ditched the trailer, ditched the log truck, and we're over here looking at <laughs> something. Andy, what'd you find? Yeah, there's like there's a couple things that stand out right off the bat to me about these trucks versus the Dodge. Uh, one is they still offer the extended cab. I'd rather have an extended cab rather than the crew cab versus a uh, regular cab. But then when you get there, you get a shorter cab though. Yeah, but versus like the Dodge, you can't get a you can get a high output and a non high output. So you got to get a 3500. To get the high output versus any of these you got high output right from the start and do the 10 speed and it's way more horsepower gentleman firing it up for us here I don't based on other YouTube videos though the fuel mileage has been great so big but seems to not like this seat at all but I don't think the hotshot guy he didn't get the power seat this one's got no pony to stick he's got the AC crank I'm just going to try to let you be able to see a little bit. That's weird. Yeah, that's good with that. Comfortable than the one in my truck, but I got a bare bones, nothing going on in that truck. With the 5500. 10 speed, 475 horsepower. First time I've ever driven a Ford power check in it. Kind of a tall truck. That's for manual mode. So I can adjust the gear I'm in right here. For when you're towing. Oh, okay. Yeah. This truck's got 41 miles on it. Make sure all yours are open. We'll rack another 20 on it. Okay. Yeah. Double the mileage. I don't think we need to let it warm up. It's hot today. Ran for five minutes. It should be good. Ranger, put a four-cylinder in them. We'll let the cop go first. Four-cylinder on the Ranger with twin turbo. It's already a fifth, sixth gear. I only felt the six and seven shift. I didn't even feel the other ones. It's an eighth gear. What the hell? Have you felt any shifts? Oh. Look at that, what did it tell you? Right here in the center, right above the M one, right there. Oh, okay. Ninth gear right now at 1200 RPM. Holy crap. Yeah, I didn't see if this one had a gooseneck hookup on the back. You want to swing by, pick up the diamond, throw it around a little bit? <laughs> Air condition is a savage in here. Hard to pull it off. Like that seat? Comfortable, yeah. I almost broke off the turn signal lever. Very, very easy to push. Yeah, you just push it and then it clicks back, I think. I was hoping for a red light right here so that I can punch it up this hill. No one behind here. Oh, uh, this is all fine. I could wait for it. The next light, yeah, cars right there. Yeah, you know, we have to catch them, get ahead of you a little bit. Oh, that 
can't work. Damn it. How's the power feel over there? I don't know. I haven't even full throttle yet. That's half throttle. So get up and go. Yeah. It's cruising in ninth gear right now. 1200 RPM. I guess that's about 55. Boy, they don't give you much gas in this, do they? Oh yeah, eighth of a tank. That's so that you feel like you're hauling ass. You got less weight. All right, what's this right here? Let's go zero to sixty on this. Clear that way. All right, here we go. Oh, torque management. There's thirty, thirty-five, forty, fifty. No, it's not even wide open. There's sixty. It's got a long gas pedal. I wasn't even to the floor. Yeah, finally hit 10th gear. Here's still got torque management like what my new truck does, so it doesn't give you just full throttle and hard acceleration in first gear. It kind of lets you roll into it, so you don't break something, I guess. All right. yeah, I got my wallet if you want to stop somewhere. <laughs> and I think they're going to be like, oh, you got food? That's nice. <laughs> right. We'll go a zero to zero. 20 to 64, we'll wait for that guy. We'll build up a little boost launch it. Doesn't like boost launch. 100% didn't like it. horsepower somewhere underneath there. Peep that thing. Oh, that is a holy crap. Yeah, that was easy to get to. Yeah, nice. That's a hoss. Game sealed. Isn't that fancy? Oh, shit. Try it out, Andy. I think that's just where it goes. And then you just step on that. It's probably the sissiest thing that I've ever seen that's actually very usable. I don't mind it. You mind it? You're hopping in and out of your truck all day trying to get to that toolbox. Yeah. It's not even that much more of an option. Well, guys, I made it back home safe and sound. I did not buy a Ford. I'll say that right now. Because the Ford that I want, <laughs> there's only actually two of those in the country. But I'll get back to that in a second uh, and talk about why I actually even went down there to look at the Fords. Is because I've heard a lot of good things about what Ford's been doing. They got the most horsepower. They got the best fuel mileage. They do not have the best exhaust brake. I can tell you about that because I, it's not quite there. Not like what the Cummins has to offer. But the reason why I went down there is... I've heard a lot of good things about the 475 horsepower, the 1050 torque, um, which is slightly better than Cummins on the torque and way better on horsepower. Uh, they got higher rev and engine and stuff like that with that power stroke. But the big money maker I'm feeling like, and what's really been calling me, is a 10 speed automatic transmission. Now, I've been Cummins through and through. That's all I've ever had. I aim to put a stick shift in pretty much every one of them that I have. This is the only automatic one that I own, and I have seven of these things. But the 10-speed automatic is awesome. It just slides right through every gear, nice and perfect. And when you're towing, um, the six-speed automatic that's in this truck is awesome. Like, it's done great. It's still continuing to do great. But sometimes I feel like, oh, well, we got to really stretch the RPMs to get the next gear. Or... There's some, you could always have an in-between gear, and that 10-speed automatic that the Ford has is money. I will say that. And the Ford that I would like to get would not necessarily be immediately to replace 
my 5500 which is an absolute beast it's a bad cherry and a half but i want to get an f450 and what makes that complicated is i want to get a regular cab i prefer an extended cab so i'd have a little bit of back seat room but i do not want a longer truck because this is a crew cab long bed plus some it has a nine foot flat bed on it maneuvering's just fine with it but for a full-time work truck which i'd like a possible ford maybe to be it be nice just to have a regular cab easy to maneuver back up in spots and uh the nice thing that ford offers is the f450 still remains high output and you can get it with a pickup bed so you're not derating like dodge does when you want to get cabin chassis in the 45 or 5500 class oh, i don't know why they do that they just need to keep high output throughout the whole thing and if you get a power stroke they just come with a 10 speed automatic transmission they do not have a lighter duty transmission that they'll derate the engine for let the cummins do what it wants or let the power stroke do what it wants that's what they're obviously going for and the real thing that interested me and i did not actually know the whole story is since the whole economy thing right now is a little weird with the virus in the year ford's really trying to push trucks what i thought was trucks but they're just trying to push their smaller inventory cars and stuff like that uh they were offering a zero percent financing uh, for like seven or eight years something like that. I don't know the whole story, but it turns out it's not on super duties And now I don't want a truck payment. I don't have one all these are paid for and but a zero percent is kind of like come get me and I tried but uh, I think right now if I do end up falling in love with Ford Which I kind of doubt that I will because for instance when I first drove that truck over there or any other ones a couple years ago I really could not stop thinking about getting a Vorchen truck with the Iason because it just freaking loved it. But the Ford, it was fast. It had a lot of power, but I wasn't completely sold. I would have to do some more testing and stuff. You do have an F450 um, and you have driven a, four, um, a Dodge. Let me know the differences and stuff because people were saying they, they had a preference for obviously Cummins is, you know, standard on this channel. There's not too many people that drove Fords that have you know back and forth reflection on each but really looking at the 450 so if you've driven a 450 versus the dodge 5500 or 3500 let me know what you guys thoughts are on it because i'm still trying to gather up more information okay guys i did a little bit more research trying to verify everything that i was saying was correct um like the f450 with the pickup bed is what i would want to get and at the time of this video uh we looked it up trying to find couple of these trucks that were like ready to go built and everything like if i wanted to buy a truck today where could we like get one shipped from and we could only find two in the entire country the united states only had two regular cab f450s pickup bed with their 2020s so the high output 10 speed automatic four wheel drive we could only find two of them one was in arizona and the other one was all the way in detroit so Kind of a rare truck finding them with the crew cab is pretty dang easy and just for instance i couldn't even find a photo of the truck i actually would like to get i would like to one in black i can only find white and blue on google but i was doing a little research just to re-verify for myself because i said that they detune um the cabin chassis trucks and they actually do like i thought i wanted to verify that because i didn't know if ford was going to be a savage and not detune there um cabin chassis trucks but like i'm saying 475 horsepower out of the pickup with the pickup bed on it 1050 torque cabin chassis trucks they derate it down to pretty much like a dodge horsepower a 330 at 825 foot pounds of torque so ideally if you got an extended cab pickup and put a flatbed on it that would be a great work truck but trying to keep the horsepower completely carb compliant don't have to mess with it because as i don't know so much if i'm getting older and just work doing my normal job not talking to a camera and not trying to figure out truck stuff but i like working on the older pickups and doing my fun but when it comes to stuff for work i wanted it to do its job every day now messing with emissions and stuff sure you can get something better but i've done so much work to my 5500 and a brand new Ford carb compliant will just absolutely, I'm sure of it, I know it'll beat it and uh, beat it up the hill. I know I don't think the Ford will hold back near as well as my 5500 coming down the hill, engine braking and stuff like that. 
but when I go and test drive one of these trucks, test driving it around like I just did isn't really showing me anything that I really want to know because I'm aiming for a work truck. So what I want to know is how it does with a gooseneck trailer behind it pulling what it's rated for. Now there's other YouTubers out there doing their thing, showing what it pulls. They made specific videos on it and then they just leave the truck. I want to know what this thing does day in and day out and how it's going to perform in the hills, going down hills, flatland. What's the difference? I'm looking at mileage from other YouTubers and the thing's doing outstanding. That thing's doing better towing like Toe Piglet. He gets better fuel mileage when he's loaded up to his 26 gross than my 3500 does um, empty with like... Um, like literally, yeah, when I, I ripped up to Nevada last night and I got about 13 and a half miles a gallon. Four tens doing about 80 mile an hour. Uh, I got like 13. And Toe Piglet's beating that, from what I remember, with a fully loaded truck. With pretty much like 100 damn near horsepower more. It was like 90 for my older truck. Difference. So, my question to you guys. Anybody out there got any affiliates in the Ford Motor Company? They can reach out to me or I can reach out to them so I can get some seat time testing out one of these trucks for more content for you guys based on the fact that I'm a Dodge guy with the Cummins Turbo Dacial and I don't know why I'm looking at Ford other than the fact that if you turn a hater into a fan, you're doing something right. So, again, we don't know what the future holds, but my email is in the description below for anybody that has information providing me with a regular cab F450 for training purposes. And I'm not going to destroy it like everybody with that other Ford guy did. But, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe, check out the channel, and check out what Taylor made me back there. <laughs> Got a V belt and sun sticker on the wall. Later on guys, subscribe. We're almost at 50k. Giveaway happening soon.